Anyone who's seen any amount of Japanese entertainment will inevitably butt heads with a common trope that, uh, doesn't quite fly with most Western sensibilities. Incest, mostly brother-sister relationships, but not uncommonly between cousins as well, is a fair staple of young adult rom-coms and otaku pop media. After seeing it for the tenth time, you just sort of accept it, and uh, familial relations, so to speak, are a normal enough part of Japanese stories that you may well learn to love it. Ask the good old Incest is Wincest team for more information. But you ever wonder why this actually is, though? Like, why the Japanese feature so many instances of what's typically a Western taboo? Well, I think the answer's twofold. Today we'll examine the two questions of why there was ever so much incest in Japanese media at all, and why there's still so much in it today. Starting with the basics, incest is legal all throughout the entire nation-state of Japan. Normal laws of consent still apply as they would in any other scenario, but incest itself is fully legal, if somewhat maligned, depending on who you're asking. This modern state comes from a historical context in which incest was a lot more prevalent than it was in a lot of Western cultures. Family bloodline and lineage as concepts carried a lot of weight in historical Japan, and interfamily marriage wasn't particularly uncommon. The specific relationship between an older brother and younger sister was a bit more sensitive than other types of incestuous relationships, but that by proxy means that those other sorts of relationships weren't maligned much at all. Using that as a base, we can skip ahead to the 90s. In contemporary Japan, it's quite common for children to spend a large portion of their youth sleeping in the same bed or set of futons with their parents. In 1991, the average age at which children would stop sleeping alongside their parents was 12.7 years old. That means that until that age, which is squarely at the start of puberty for boys and especially so for girls, children would be constantly exposed to their family members, parents and siblings, up to and often including hearing their parents having intercourse right besides them. Skip up the clock a few years and you see that Japan has a disproportionately high number of cases of mother-son incest specifically relative to other countries, in which mothers initiate sexual action with their sons during their high school years. Incest isn't well reported, for a plethora of reasons. As such, estimates to case total across the country vary wildly depending on who's asking and, much more importantly, who's answering. More data collected in the 90s show that one-third of respondents to a sexual inquiry survey claim to have experienced some sort of familial molestation in their lives. However, this is also around the same time that a shifting global consensus led to more families growing more and more embarrassed over the proximity of their children to their parents' sexual action, which may, though documentation is sparse, result in these findings deflating over the years. An important thing to understand, though, with all this information is that the 90s weren't really that long ago. A child in the 90s or 80s could well be producing the stories that you read in light novels or manga or watch an anime or anything like that now that they're an adult, and that's all assuming that these numbers have had a real change over time and that information just isn't readily available. The point of examining everything thus far has been to set the cultural stage. When you take this information as context, it isn't that hard to extrapolate and see why incest was ever included so prevalently in anime and other such otaku media. Using my own experience, let's perform a little test study. Going through my logs of Japanese stuff, I counted 22 pieces of Japanese media I'd personally seen all the way through that featured incest as a core tenant to at least some part of one of its romances. I am, by the way, familiar with a lot more stories that have incest in them, but for the sake of fairness, this is only going to be things I completely finished, or else we'd be here all day. Anyway, this list breaks down into 9 visual novels, 5 light novels, 6 manga, and 2 anime originals that span well over the course of a decade, and range from the rather obscure to cultural giants. Of these 22 stories, almost all of them show the incest played completely straight or otherwise used in tandem with serious drama. Not much is just lighthearted fun, so to speak. That said, the drama usually comes from outside elements of the plot that are incidental to the portrayals of incest, the overwhelming majority of which are between brothers and their siblings, with a few cousin romances for good measure. Only Koi Kaze and Grisai no Meikyu really have drama that is about incest, looking at it with society intact and as examining the ramifications therein, as opposed to just presenting it de facto as most other things do. In something like canon, Nayuki's still present romantic love for her cousin is presented without any concept of the incest itself being that weird. The conflict in Yubichi and Ayuki's relationship come from external sources, but the explicit nature of the relationship as cousins doesn't really play into things. Most cases of incest in media is dealt with in this manner. The familial relationship between characters is pointed out, but treated the same as any other romance past the surface acknowledgement. Any and all apprehension on the part of the protagonist with regard to the advances of their family member is treated more or less in a similar way to the awkward, semi-romantic, semi-adversarial relationship common in the Osananajimi. Indeed, the childhood friend archetype and its appeals are what the typical brocon siskon relationship is most similar to, the nature of the fantasy being quite similar at heart. All this can be contested with something like The Labyrinth of Grisaya, in which the incestuous relationship between the protagonist Yuji and his sister Kazuki is not a sweet, honeyed affair, but a direct result of their parental abuse, posing a more realistic scenario in which two young siblings might actually find themselves physically and emotionally relying on one another. The two kids feel like there isn't anywhere except with each other that they really belong in the world. 
And so they actively disregard social opinion, or at least Kazuki does on her and her brother's behalf. Incest is addressed as being something abnormal, and yet they choose to engage in it anyways. Years later, Yuji is pitied and seen as the victim of abuse, not only from his parents, but also from his sister and her romantic and sexual advances, the strictly parasitic nature of which he denies. That said, while interesting, the incest in the story isn't really indicative of the everyday incest we looked at in the studies, and is more of an extreme case for sure. The data we've gone over this far serves to explain why exactly it is that incest was ever a media touchstone, but that begs the second question posed at the start. Why is incest still so prevalent? The normalization of incest, both because of media showing these kinds of relationships to begin with, and for every other historical point we've listed thus far, certainly contribute a lot to it, but I think a more nuanced answer can be found if we dig a little deeper into my test case. Visual novels, by far, were the most likely medium of storytelling to feature incest with light novels taking the second place. Certainly some of this skew could be credited to the fact that visual novels are proportionately far, far, far more likely to be romances than any other genre, but that point is equally discredited by the fact that I've seen far, far, far more romances in general out of other mediums than visual novels that just don't involve incest at all. With manga and anime original stories so far lagging behind the other two mediums, what can explain this bias? Well, the answer is otaku. Everything discussed here, make no mistake, can readily fall under the banner of otaku media. However, visual novels and light novels more so than anime and manga are more likely to be picked up by more socially fringe members of the otaku banner. This isn't exclusively true, obviously, but a trend no doubt. AKA, the more hardcore otaku audience is more likely to get something that features incest based off our little tiny sample size than a general audience. And while 22 items is hardly enough to make calls about the sweeping motives of a nation, this conclusion makes a lot of sense economically and culturally. Otaku and otaku subcultures are, especially the further down you look, more likely to indulge in ever more superficially strange and otherwise maligned things in media than any other demographic. From things like girl and ultraviolence to more sexually deviant material in any number of ways that I'm sure you all are very familiar with. The same reasoning explaining why any of this is the case can be applied to the cultural normalization of incest as well. The otaku are fringe, subcultures even more so. Things like Yaru and Lolita exist in no small part as a means of societal rebellion. The Yaru and Lolita both reject the ways things are supposed to be in the eyes of the older generation, with regard to young women in Japanese culture. The economic collapse of the 90s resulted in many youth unable to follow the same paths that their parents did and their grandparents did before them. The salary man lifestyle was both unavailable to many and flat out undesirable to many even further. This created many youths a sort of us versus them mentality with regard to the older generation that only drove people further and further into corners. The same pressure that created the hikikomori created the ever more diversifying and ever more intensely abnormal otaku-adjacent subcultures that run wild throughout Japan today. When you look at stories with incest, particularly those with brother-sister incest, it's really easy to write it off as emotional padding for relationships the same way that writers manipulate the audience with the osanana jimi. Falling in love with a sweet younger sister that looks up to you and has always looked up to you is easy, and hence is comforting and hence is marketable. This is an undeniable facet of the trend, but zooming out a bit, Incest is likely so popular with otaku because it's more strange to the common society. The same society that rejects you as being a failure or a loser rejects in part this trend that the westerners and an ever more westernizing nation look down on. So why not embrace it? Why not piss off the adults a little bit more and explore a story scenario that can be gratifying in the same way that any other fringe tag can be gratifying? Equal parts history, marketing, deviancy, and defiance are what make incest an inseparable part of Japanese otaku media. In other words, incest exists because it has always existed. Incest exists because it's a comforting fantasy. Incest exists because people keep buying it. And incest exists because some people would really rather it not. And Twincest is just kind of based, so uh, no complaints from me. Thank you.